and we're hiking the Glimmer Waterfall Trail in Asgard, I mean Iceland. And um, you, can, you probably can't see, but if there's white little specks flying around up there, they're north of the Mars, they nest on those cliffs. Hope to see them a little closer. The trail starts here. I'll show you some of it as we go along. This is a little glacier fed. It's glacier water. It's nice and pure. It's coming down at a fast pace. It's not getting stagnant. I don't ever advise drinking water from a stream. You never know what's upstream from it. But in this case, actually, we kind of do. So even if something were to die on this room, it goes so fast it's being carried down, it's not going to really affect drinking water too much. Again, advise against it, but. Um, Place water that you're ever going to find in, in any way, really. Um, quite an interesting environment for aquatic animals, including things like dippers, which are birds which like mountain streams. And this is a fast moving, not many pools, all riffles environment. And only certain animals are going to be able to deal with I'm sure plants too. I don't know if you so always think like that. Um, organisms in general. Let me go into that cave for a second. I'm going to put that again on, on the other camera and splice it in. It's a very small cave. Just thought I'd shoot this as well. Um, if it was a larger cave, it should be more interesting or you're supposed to find or if I search more carefully, maybe. Caves like this are always good shelter, but this one's kind of a hiking trail and people come here. so. Be making, having a large animal, for example, we don't have that many in Iceland anyway, but having a large animal use something like this, they're too smart for that. There's plenty of other places that they can maintain a good shelter. It's not a shelter to me because it's I like I just realized that first stream I crossed, that don't even make the book. <laughs> And what I mean by that is, you know, if you look at the reviews and, and how many times you have to cross the stream, it's twice. Oh cool. Anyway, um, it's twice. Yeah, that first stream that I crossed, which was big enough to call it a real stream. Um, that wasn't it. <clears throat> so this is going to be more interesting in a second. I should show you. That is the stream. In summertime, there's a lot to put up over there. Um, it's a bit wild at the moment. Let's see if this is even possible. I think I can do it. There's supposed to be a rope, too. I'm gonna look at that rope. It's probably still in the best place to cross. If not, those huge islands of rocks in the middle would be helpful. It does look a little passable if I go through quickly. I'm going to change shoes for this one because this is crazy. Um, yeah, so the GoPro on my head. But that way, definitely not going to be cold. Holy crap. That's a tangent.
Okay, this is undassable. I went in the river. Oh, do that. I went in the river and started carrying me away. Not doing it. <laughs> I mean, literally, like pushing me down that stream. I was headed down it. I had to work just to get back to shore. Work hard. Not, I'm not small. So, uh, smartest thing to do is going to be cut this part of it out. Now, I think there's a trail that goes up there and I can avoid crossing this river. I'm going to go just up and back and I'm going to try it. For now, I'm going to do some glacier water and um, maybe bring it back to home and look at it and see if I'm anything interested in it in the lab. I'm not sure. Or I'll drink it. One or the other. I'm not going to cross this. I'm freezing cold right now. Uh, it was not safe, so gotta be smart. So here's what I've done. Couldn't cross, obviously, so I'm not taking the trail the way. There are different trails here. But I'm not taking the way the trail I intend to, intended to go. Um, got a little lost trying to find another trail really quickly. But it's really important to stay on the rocks and the mud here, especially. And not step on the vegetation. Some of these guys, it takes them an awful long time to get established and growing. The conditions are not great for plants all year long. That, it's harsh, right? So a lot of these plants are... It's hard for them to recover. They're not very resilient. So really harsh to step on them, uproot them, not trying to. So I'm not. I'm stepping on the rocks, stepping on the mud as best I can. And we'll continue to do so. I found a trail. So right now, I'm good. But just a little hiking etiquette. Ecological importance. See in the distance that this salt water, it's a fuel water, actually. And the ocean water. And you can see in the not so distant places here, like right next to me, all these seabirds that are nesting on these cliffs. It's a great way to avoid being predated. You know, you have eggs and young to take care of. Stay on these cliffs, they're not gonna get you. These are Northern Fulmars. Um, they do live in North America as well as in Europe. And you're kind of on the border of that here because you're in Iceland. In fact, tectonically, you are on the border of North America and Iceland is, and Europe. It is, they are both represented plate-wise. These northern fulmars are seabirds. They're out to sea. That's where they, obviously not here. This is where they nest. So there's tons of them. And they do have to get back to get the best spots on the cliff. This is um, something that people have studied. They do have to get back early to do that. And, and it is pretty early. So um, they're here getting the best spots. And they've probably been here a little bit at this point. They, they wouldn't have been here over the winter, I don't believe. Um, Maybe some of them do overwinter, but this is really for nesting that they use these clips. So we're getting to be upon that season sooner, sooner rather than later. And having a spot on the cliff means you're going to get uh, a mate, and you're going to be successful reproducing, and those chicks will be more successful in surviving. And all of that is really important. So um, they're related to shearwaters, um, and they actually have. Uh, well-developed sense of smell in like most birds too. You can hear them, they're kind of noisy and just kind of flying around right now. But if you look at all, all those little white dots on the cliff, those are northern full marks. And yes, I knew they were here before I got here. See them a little closer on the ledge. Northern full marks. They're bickering a bit. Maybe some courtship going on. Now they got quiet. There they go. So after climbing up the last hill, I mean, there's that too. But um, 
There's a screen field, which is basically a bunch of rocks towards the top. Some usually climb that. And we're gonna get to the falls. I'm not turning around since I didn't get to do it the way I wanted. I'm not crossing the falls over here. Couldn't do it down below. It wasn't safe. Stupid to try again. Try the first one. Yeah, that one was fast. Uh, I knew better. But I got to do it in a smooth way. Meaning, testing it out in this minute, it started getting actually dangerous. I stopped. Probably was a minute. Should have done it before it actually got dangerous. And that was my learning, teachable moment there. Don't do that. Realize it's moving fast. Put a foot in. Say, yeah, that really is fast. Go back. But at least I was going to try to push it any further. That would have been really bad. I would have been swimming. And it's cold out. It's 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Not cool. Alright. Some canyon here. This is Glimmer Falls. Tallest in all of Iceland. Can't really get enough to the right where we can see the full bottom. Because I couldn't cross the other side. Maybe away from up above it. It still won't be the same view that I was hoping for where you can see like a little going down, but it's still beautiful. Glad that it's a beautiful hike, nice canyon. Glad to be here. Okay, I lied. I went the rest of the way. It's easier to get back here if we make a left hand turn. Back from here. That's my excuse. This shows you the geology of Iceland. Iceland is in Europe from a political standpoint, of course, but now we're talking geology. Come up to this viewing platform. I'll explain a bit more. So this is Thingvellir National Park, and there's a big lake, as you can clearly see, but that's not why we're here. The main purpose of coming here is, it's really interesting how you are, I am now on the North American side. The North American plate. We're in, geologically, we're in North America. It's a big divergent plate boundary which I was also explained has a lot of transform slip and fall, uh, slip and strike faults that are kind of part of that divergent boundary. It's not clear cut. You have these spots where they do rub against each other and break. And that's what causes things like this. That path that we're going to walk down is not the boundary between North America and the European plate. That's actually seven kilometers away. It goes about an average of 0.7 centimeters. It grows 
every year, but that's not dependable or stable. It's just the average. So it does get wider on average, 0.7 centimeters a year. But again, some years doesn't do it at all. But way across there is actually the other boundary, seven kilometers away. I'm not even sure if we can see it clearly from here. What we're going to be walking on this path, which is really cool, is basically a small fault that occurred. It's a little, that filled with sediment. We're going to be walking on that sediment. It's all within the North American plate. <laughs> from a political standpoint, this is where Iceland was basically established. Parliament or something like that. But I'm not really going to focus on that. Just again, from a plate boundary standpoint, it's really interesting that Iceland is in the middle. Mid Atlantic Ridge basically goes right through it. It's a divergent boundary. And right now I'm in North America, but up seven kilometers away, it is Europe across this valley. Just watch as we go. It's gonna be really cool. Geyser. Actually, with all other geysers, were named after the geyser spouting. I'll explain how this works in a second. You can see you know, hydrothermal activity here. Deep through the water. Geologically active zone. a little bit more about that.